fuck yeah you know i'm ready to talk some game of thrones spoiler review of the broken man and i knew it i called that shit no i didn't call it but i knew it i knew that the hound was still alive actually me and uh super nerd 81 aka james and spencer were here in this room the other day and we we're talking about like the hound like how who was our favorite characters and the hound was thrown of course i'm like there's no way and we were discussing like do you think the hound is still alive and i'm like I really did did think he was still alive because, I mean, just the way they set it up, just the way that uh, Aya was like, just, you know, kind of left him for dead. But yet we don't have true confidence. I mean, if they were going to kill off that character, he's going to go out in a blaze of glory. So him being introduced in the beginning of this episode was like, I knew it. I knew that son of a bitch was still alive. And there he is. And I'm glad that the hound is still alive. Uh, it's going to be interesting if he, you know, meets up with, uh, Aya down the line or who knows. We'll see. Starks are dumb. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Ian McShane was in this episode and I think he's perfect to be at least a character in Game of Thrones. Of course, we saw what happens at the end with him. So, you know, the Hound got rescued by Ian McShane and his crew. Um, I'm just going to go to that part real quick because I really, cause this is spoiler review. So I'm assuming you saw the episode cause who doesn't watch Game of Thrones, right? How stupid was Ian McShane in this episode? How stupid was he just to say, well, yeah, we don't have no, telling those people, we have no steel, we have food, but you can come for supper. Like, did he really think that they weren't going to just murder the shit out of all of them? And the Hound told him, like, dude, you need, you're a fighter, you need, you need to buck up, champ. He's like, I'm tired of fighting. Like, well, if you're dead, you're dead. I mean, if you have women, you know, children and people you need to protect, you need to protect them. But they all got slaughtered. They all got slaughtered. Uh, the Hound did say they have a little bit of steel, so they didn't put that steel into good use. And even the guy warned him. was like, oh, be careful at night. There's a lot of bad people out there. Like, come on. That's a threat. That's a threat. Please, Ian McShane, do something. It was very sad to see the hound, you know, hear all the cries and all that stuff. It was kind of funny when he was hearing the cries and he was going to the area. Um, nobody was there. <laughs> you know, you would think somebody would be there. He sees Ian McShane's character hung uh, by that little, uh, I think they were, weren't they kind of church folks? It seemed like they were kind of church folks, but not really. I mean, Ian McShane said, ah, it doesn't really matter what the gods is now. I never even seen a god. Um but Ian McShane was hung, and the Hound's going to go some, get some sweet, sweet revenge. So, uh, glad the Hound is alive. I love the Hound. Um, I, I think he's a good character. I think he's a great character. And, you know, they keep telling him. And he even says, like, they always tell me this. Like, the gods are not done with me yet. I think towards the end of the series, they will be done with him, though. Uh, the Hound, I see going out in a blaze of glory. And I loved, the, I loved Ian McShane and the Hound's dialogue and those two interacting with each other. I love, It was very funny, especially with the Hound saying, I'm a tough son of a bitch. That's why, you know, I, I just love that, uh, the whole, I, I love the dynamic. I thought they had great chemistry. I thought Ian McShane was perfect in the role. Of course, he's done. He's dead. Uh, I was like, oh, shit, it's Ian McShane. I would love to Ian McShane to actually have a permanent role, but that's not going to happen now. John, Sansa, and Davos, I believe that's how you say his name, they're all looking for, you know, recruitment. They, of course, they get the wild things, uh, wildlings in their army. They all agreed to help John because John literally got killed for them. Uh, they go to, I, I thought they said Mormon. It might have been a, the Mormon house, the Mor Mormon house, the Mormon house, something like that, where the little kid was sitting on the throne. She's like, she was sassy, man. But I like that little kid. And Davos has a way of little kids. He's like, listen, we, your excellency, we just need some of your men. Come on, just help us out here. And so Sansa and John do get some recruitment, 62 men out of that house. Um, we see them. Going to another house, which was, uh, I forgot the name of the other house, but his brother served for Rob, and he's pissed, man. I mean, he's like, oh, dude, we're not going to serve you. Like, we took this, you took, you just took this castle with Bolton, and yeah, I get what you're saying. We love, we were saddened when Ned died, but like, what was Rob doing when my brother was dying? What was Rob doing when we were trying to get the castle, you know? He was there banging his hot ass foreign chick you know so um i mean john is in a predicament i mean he has 
2,000, uh, technically 2,000 men, a couple men here and there, but he still needs more. He needs more to take Ramsey's, Lord Bolton's, take Winterfell back. He needs more men. Sansa seems to have a plan. She, she did uh, say one of the houses would guarantee we're going to help them out, but John's like, no, we need to go now. Now. We can't wait. We got to go. We can't go to this other house to ask for help. We need to go. But Sansa seems to be getting uh, delivering a message from the crow. I don't know what house. Maybe that house she was talking about. Uh, we'll see when it comes. Push comes to uh, shove. I did love Davos in this episode. Really stepping up as John's really right hand man. He really knows his shit. He went from Stannis to John, but I think he fits perfectly with John because John actually hears what he has to say and actually listens to him. He even told Sansa like this dude. Hey, this motherfucker's like been you know he help, he's been helping out us. For a lot, a lot. So let's listen to him. He knows what he's doing. So love John for that. Uh, bringing in Davos in as pretty much his right hand man. Um, we also had Cersei talk. Uh, well, we had Marjorie. Marjorie, I knew she was just not playing along about the high, with the High Sparrow, like acting like she's a goody two shoes for the the new religion that they're trying to push on her. Uh, push on her. She's telling her grandmother to leave, or she's going to be thrown in one of these cells because they're saying you're a sinner. So she gives slips her no. I thought that was a uh, nice and clever. Um, Cersei just uh, as I say, Cersei. Uh, Cersei, she's just um. You know, she, I mean, the grandmother had a point. I mean, she, what can she do? What can she do? I was sitting there like, what could she do? What can she do? She has no army. Her son is pretty much not with her anymore. I mean, what can she do? She has no cards to play. She's done. She's out. She has no more money. But we'll see what, you know, it's Game of Thrones. You know, there's always shit that she's, and especially Cersei, she knows her shit. You know what I mean? Uh, speaking of the Lannisters. We have Jamie going to one of the castle, uh, Blackfish's castle, and tries to say, you need, you need to get your ass out of there. And uh, name of the king, you need to get your ass out of there, or we're going to kill all you motherfuckers. So um, I do like how Jamie is buddy-buddy with the uh, Lord Tyrion's kind of buddy-buddy friend. Uh, I forget his name as well. I love that character, though. Uh, so Jamie tries to reason with this guy, this Lord Blackfish. He tries, just like, come on, dude. Like, you're all your men, a lot of your men's gonna die. We're gonna go to war. It, uh, you know, the war's over, but we're gonna go do battle, and just a lot of deaths could be spared if you just give us the damn castle. And that's exactly what doesn't happen. <laughs> he doesn't give him the damn castle. So, uh, we're gonna see some battles going on with Jamie and his troops. Um, and then when he took over those troops. So the last bit of thing that we need to discuss is Arya. Uh, I want to say Arya, but I think I'm saying that right. Aya or Arya. <sighs> I always mess it up. Come on, James. Where are you, man? You're supposed to be telling me this shit. She is so stupid. <laughs> this is why I think the Starks must be dumb. How did you not think? First of all, you knew the faceless man was going to go after your ass. You knew that leaving, not doing your job, that he told you. There is no second chance. That's a threat. That's a th People seem to not get what the fuck threats are. She, I mean, she walks around all high and mighty. She gives cash to this dude like, hey, I need a ship. I need a cabinet. El tomorrow, el noon. She goes and looks at the nice scenery. She's just walking all about. And then when this old lady says, hey, you little girl, bah, 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 stab you, bitch, stab you. And uh, Aya or Arya, uh, Aya jumps out into the water, gets away. She's still alive, barely. I mean, she got shanked, son. She got American me shanked. Like, she like, like, she got shanked. She got away just in time to really get the final death blow. But she got shanked. I don't know, man. She's hurting. I think I don't think she's gonna die, but she's hurting. She's an idiot, though. I mean, she actually all that training, her blindness, and able to train and to able to fight. She still got fucking surprised. She still got stabbed. Like this, I'm waiting for her to be the total badass that we were promised. And there's hints here and there, but when it comes down to actually being a badass, she fails. Uh. Very disappointed in that. I mean, I thought she was going to reverse that shit and kill her. But she doesn't. She uh, Arya just gets stabbed. She gets stabbed. So I'm just like, just, god damn it. Please, come on. Please, please, get back. Be badass already. Just be badass already. 
Um, uh, that's that's that situation. I mean, like I said, she's hurting right now. We don't know what the fate of her is, but she's alive. She's gonna be alive. Um, somebody's gonna take her in. She has money. Well, I don't know if she has money now, but um, uh, that was such a stupid. I don't know why. I don't know why she got caught like that. I just don't like. She's a. She's supposed supposed to be a badass. She got caught like that, so I'm irritated by that. Um, and then the last bit of thing we got to talk about is Theron. Uh, you know he doesn't have a dick. <laughs> his sister and all the, and the crew are just having a blast. Like his sister's like really getting that ass. She's like sucking on that tit. Like she's 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 all she's happy. But I really did like the fact that you know she's <laughs> she's pretty much telling Theron to play a drinking game. Like she's told him, sure, like I need you to be with me. I don't need a Theron who's a cowardly little pup. I need you to be a man. I need you the Theron that's gonna be manning up, manning up, taking, going wherever we need to go. And I need you. Look at me. Drink, drink first, and then look at me. I need you. When she said she was going to go look at the Dragon Queen, Khaleesi's, and um, use, have her army hook up with her army, and she has the ships. What does Khaleesi's need? Ships. Holy shit, man. I thought Theron and his sister, I th- for sure, I thought they were going to hook up with uh, John, but no. They're hooking up with Khaleesi's, and it makes so total sense. It makes total sense. Khaleesi's, ne- Khaleesi's needs ships. They have the fastest ships. Shit's about to get real, son. Shit's about to... I mean, uh, rumors are saying that there's only, like... There's not even that many episodes in season six. And that we're only going to get maybe one season instead of two seasons. Or we're only going to get two seasons. And the books are not even done. So, uh, George R. R. Martin is, like, actually going to give him the ending of what he overall sees. So, it just... Everything feels like it's all coming to down to a conclusion. Because Davos Ted told her, like, hey, listen, we the North, the North needs to, needs to come together and fight these White Walkers. Because these things are real. The, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you have. They don't care. They just want to kill you and resurrect your ass and take over. Like, I am super excited for events to come out, come down in the future. Overall, good episode. Um, great, I know, confirmation of the Hound. But stupid, stupid things that these some of these characters do in this episode that kind of, like, got me going, why? Why? <laughs> you know? Um, but overall... It's just really, it felt like really another big setup to more to come, but a lot of great hints here and there. Um, a lot of great interaction, a lot of great dialogue that was thrown around in this episode. Uh, of course, production value looked fantastic as always. Um, but it's gonna be interesting, it's interesting the dilemma that John has, the dilemma, and where the hell might be going after this. Where will the hell meet up with anybody else? Who knows? And uh, you know. The Starks, man. The Starks, uh, yeah, how many? <laughs> there are only so many left. And that guy was right. It's like the Starks' house is basically dead. So John and Sansa have to really prove to tell, show this guy, like, no, we're not. We're ready to fucking take over. So, thank you guys for listening. If you haven't already, I'm Dan Magadania Son. You can always subscribe to the channel. Would really appreciate it. Just hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you like it. And comment below. Love to hear you guys' thoughts on this episode. I know I get some of the names uh, wrong here and there, but hopefully I'm trying to get better at it. But my overall idea is that this show is awesome. It's probably my number one show. That's all you need to know. <laughs> all right, I'm Dan Megan Daniel's son, and I am King of the North. I'm the real, I'm the real king. So, peace.